Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show and uh, continuing the tour of Texas, that, uh, or the recap of my tour of Texas, we're going to move over to Spicewood Vineyards. Um, this was actually the first winery that I visited during the whole trip. Um, and uh, I've been to this winery before, um, a couple years ago, on one of those like tours that you take. Um, you, know, you meet up somewhere and you get to get in the big, not the big, but you get in like the little charter bus type of thing or big van, um, kind of like you know the rental car, rental car companies have, drive out in the middle of nowhere in Texas and go visit some wineries. So this was one of the ones we went to. Um, and a few things that I want to talk about real quick. Okay, I use this book kind of as a little reference, uh, kind of a guide to this help me decide where I want to, wanted to go on my first Texas trip. Uh, the information is a little outdated, like like I talked about in the uh, the Fall Creek interviews, but um, it still has the majority of the wine. You know, a lot of the, the wineries there. Uh, I've got some great information, kind of an idea where it is. So if you are looking for a, a good starter book on the wine roads or about Texas, get this: the Wine Roads of Texas. Uh, you can actually see a little bit better than the other one. It's by Wes Marshall, and uh, do that. The other thing, if you're a local Texan, uh, or if you're coming in to visit. Get yourself one of these little passports. Um, you know the Texas Wine Trail uh, or Texas Wine Passport, and what you do is you um, you get it stamped at the wineries. Uh, for every four, you get some type of reward level. Um, I've only just now actually got some of these stamps, so um, check it out. Uh, go to if you if you Google Go Texan and put wine, uh, you'll find out everything you need to know about this. But um, let's see what. It, we should have the yeah, gotexanwine.org is, uh, is the, is the uh, place to check out. All right, so what wine are we going to have today? We're going to have the 2009 Spicewood Vineyards Torriga Nacional. Now, this is uh, one of those grape varietals that um, you don't really hear a whole heck of a lot from at least American wineries. But as Texas winemakers are starting to figure out, even though uh, Ed was saying that uh, you can... Um, grow the traditional Bordeaux varietals, which you can, but Texas wine winemakers are starting to figure out that maybe the Bordeaux varietals are not the ones that they need to necessarily key in on. Maybe hit some of the Spanish and Portuguese wines. And what some of the winemakers, not this particular one, but we'll talk about when we get to that. Um, but, uh, well, even Ed, you know, Ed, when he traveled around Spain, uh, noticed that, um, the interior of Spain was very much like Texas. So when people said, well, you can't grow grapes in Texas, yes, you can, okay? Um, and some of the other winemakers are seeing that there's a lot of similarities between Spain uh, and Texas, and so they're trying to use some of those varietals. Uh, Tempranillo is another one, which um, when we had the Fall Creek Tempranillo, it was spectacular. Um, I really liked it, and I cannot wait for the 2010 to come out. So, uh, Spicewood Vineyards Torriga Nacional 2009, uh, $25.99 at the winery. Um, so, it's not cheap, by the way. It's 100% Torriga Nacional. Um, Texas Hill Country is the uh, appellation. So, let's check it out. All right, first of all, uh, color depth, you know, it's, it's, um, it's pretty deep. Uh, I even call it dark. Um, it's got... Uh, you know, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty dark. Um, I'm gonna call it honestly. I'm gonna call it kind of purplish, not really garnet. So we'll go dark purple, and uh, it's clear. All right, aroma intensity. It was uh, it's pretty aromatic, um, and if I didn't know better, I would think it might be a little bit aged, but but. It, it's, it's, it doesn't smell age, but 
I wouldn't peg it as only being a couple years. I wouldn't peg it as a 2009. I'd probably add another year or two to it. All right, so what are, what are we getting on, on the nose? You know, I'm getting kind of, I'm getting some smoke. But like this um, caramel type of thing, like, like uh, you, uh, uh, um, burnt sugar. You know, uh, when, when, when you're caramelizing something or caramelizing something, um, you get that little burnt sugar, like, so, like a burnt sugar smell. That's what it is. Because I couldn't figure out what it was uh, when I was at the winery and I could smell that. But kind of like uh, caramel and kind of like, you know, yes, caramel. Interesting. Um, so let's try it out. So it's dry. Um, I really think it's kind of a light bodied wine. It's not really medium body. It's kind of light body. Um, it's got a bit of acidity. I'm going to call it kind of smooth. Um, that's just my impression of it. Yeah, kind of smooth. Um, tannins. This is where we're gonna we're gonna really delve into this a little bit. They're medium body tannins, um, but the type they're kind of I would say they're kind of round. Um, there's a bit of roundness to it. I mean, they are dry, but it's kind of a roundness to it. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna call um, the balance. I'm going to call it a good balance on this one. And the flavor intensity, I'm going to say it's, it's pretty flavorful. Um, there we go. Now we're, starting to little, now we're starting to get a little more efficient on stuff here. Let's talk about the flavors. I still get a bit of that that um, burnt sugar uh, flavor, but I'm also getting kind of um, wood. Okay, now it is aged nine months, um, which I'd have to look at the uh, see on their website. They didn't re they don't really have their website completely finished, but um, on their uh, tasting notes. They've got um, how much time is spent in oak, and if I remember right, it was uh, nine months. And nope, that's not it. Gotta go a little bit farther back, and it's right here. It's on this one. Uh, let's see, nine months uh, in forty percent new American, and twenty percent in one old American oak, and forty percent neutral oak. Now let's talk about their tasting notes: paprika, violet, smoked cedar. I'll get, I'll get the smoked cedar. I got that. Um, plum and smoked meat. You know what? I there is that smokiness, um, and, and I guess I guess um, I guess kind of that barbecue type of kind of that barbecuey type of flavor. And I, I would say dark dark red fruits. Uh, maybe not necessarily plum. And you've got a bit of sweetness at the very end. Um, it's a medium finish. I mean, I really like this wine. I mean, I know it's a twenty-six dollar bottle of wine, so it should be not outstanding, spectacular, but it needs to be better than kind of your typical bottle of wine. Um, I would score this uh, in the high eighties if um, if I was going to score, which I'm going to score it. Um, 
I would say it's probably a high 80s wine. I'd probably put about an 88. Um, and, uh, you know, it's one of those things, this is going to be one of those things where it's hard when you're talking about the other 46 as far as wines. And even when you're talking about the big four, in some cases, in price and value, what you're getting. It's a $26 bottle of wine. It's a varietal that's not used a lot in the United States. Um, it's, it's, it's something that they've tried out, that they're getting some success, you know, they're, they feel they're successful on at the winery. $26. It's probably a little bit high priced, in my opinion. However, they got to pay, you know, they got to pay the electric bill, okay? Um, if it was, I hate to say $10 cheaper, but if it was a few dollars cheaper, I would, I would give it a higher recommendation. But at the same time, I recommend getting the wine. Um, if you can spend $26 on it, uh, do it. Um, if you're like, man, that's, that's a lot of money spending on a bottle of wine of, of a varietal I'm not very familiar with, then I would say stay away from it. You know, go go to something else that they make at the winery that's a little more traditional. I've had other, I've had some of their other wines at the, at the day you know the day I went and the last time I went. I think they're all very well made wines, um, and you can find some wines in the kind of the mid you know that fifteen to eighteen dollar range that you'd be more comfortable buying. This is a wine where you're like, man, I really want to try this out. What Texas is going to do with it, and you are going to spend a little bit for it. You know, with that said, I think it's an 88-point wine. Um, I'll even go 89. It was almost I th I, 89 point. Definitely, you know, this is up your style of wine. Seek it out if you're in the Texas area. Um, go to the website if you're able to order it from them. It doesn't look like they're, they're able to really do ordering yet, but they do have a wine club uh, that you can uh, join. And uh, I know I get um, I know I get uh, emails from them, so check them out. Well, that's going to do it for today. Um, remember, I got the the recommendations and uh, stop by the website, donate, and um, tell your friends about it. I mean, I've been getting a lot more views lately. Uh, now that I've been back, it's been great. And uh, we'll see everybody again next time.